Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel, where an experienced and certified detective is about to educate you with facts and not hyperbole or propaganda for, its government, for the government or its minion. I'm here to educate you when it comes down to criminal. And you can see even the criminals are using social media or to spread propaganda or to, um, to create an image of themselves. Um, it's going to be a two-part two video. You know, one about um, Siren Clark and the other one about his um, his sister, in which she's not denying that her brother is a killer, you know, and she's challenging the other gunmen within Riverton City to come and walk up and down with their rifle as they have done before, you know. I understand. So I want you to listen to what Siren Clark is saying and then you can check it out. Shoot them in the Riverton community where because the community people them call on spear police them 15 base police and two gun police because as I say the man sit down upon them in them back pocket because they have a war been going on in the Riverton community for the last past maybe seven years because they in a custody for six years and during the whole time me in a custody war been going on in the community people are dead are flying and now me come from jail after six years the 25th of april now they must say since me come from jail murder been increasing in the community and shooting and extortion and if if anybody at all willing to do an investigation in the riverton community for the last past six years no month at all a river can never pass and five six man no dead when me that jail me just come from jail police put me out in a newspaper say i want it me is a person of interest i'm almost turning myself by tomorrow morning which is the 27th of me them say for turning myself them put me out in the paper the 26th of me say me is a person of interest connection to three murder Remember me in a custody for six years, you know. Them charged me for three murder, you know. Me in a custody for six years, you know. But all of the murder them I'm charged, I mean I do. But I just money them I take. So them say if them can't kill me, them prison me. But the justice system no work like how you hear people talk or police talk because judge and a fool. Liar and a fool. So you see when them come with them make up thing, it eventually I go fail them because you can't make up a story or you somebody fi, 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 fi. say for instance a man send a woman go a station. So you go on a station go tell them so you are siren do that. Wait, 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 tay, tay, tay. And when them go station, they make them report. But deep in their mouth, them know it's not siren do it. So you see when they come to the court time, them now nah come forward because them know in them heart it's not siren do it. But because them get money and under program them go get the report say it's me do it which may not have nothing to do with it just like now me just come three murder take place since me come in the community and believe you me the three murder that may take place you know are three different set of youth who no have no connection with one another you know none out of the three youth that were dead don't have no connection with one another but yet still a siren kill the whole three of them me a person of interest in the three of them murder I understand everybody know who killed them you know even the police them who are put me out in a newspaper know who killed them they say the unspear police them who are take money from the blingers them and color the man them you have raga g you have juba you have dme them collect extortion half of the factory them you from the blingers school you have billy ricky and kemi but billy are the bigger boss ricky are second in commander Kemi at the ground done, him at the done for the blingers school. So when Ragaji them and Juba them collect them extortion money off a factory, them and where them for hand to Billy and them put to them to put and pack it off them little 15 bills and two can police board them so them have them in them pocket. So say the unspear station now. They need to do a serious investigation in the unspear station. Because be a corruption down there. 
you see the police they want frequent the river town area you have yogi noah's lick lead our next one on him yogi lick lead and tucker you see them they have some bike police in the community with patrol who want not have baby mother have woman where them live in with them have a special yard where them park and stay where them don't move them not frequent nowhere in the community so when something happens in the community them just wait till them friend them call them and tell them a oh so if you them friend them them i do the murder and the crime them in the community and then tell them police when them say yo watch on a man i bought john brown do that you know so see if billy ricky put their money together when them collect the whole of their money from juba them and DM them and raga g them then put it together and pay them police friend them. So it's a tucker, corruption police. Liquid corruption police. Yogi, corruption police. Noah's corruption police. They have one next one with them call him Dalton Morgan from the Unsby. Corruption police. Cause him talking, you know, Dalton Morgan talking, you know, say, all the years of my lock up man in a custody. And the enough is money him ever get for send a man to prison. You know, him say every court date him get 200 toes, you know. Me there in a custody for six years, and I can tell you, say, Dalton Morgan never. So now that you have listened to Siren Clark um, and his delivery, and, you know, telling you stuff about the Unspear police and you know, police officer having children in Riverton and all kind of stuff like that. That was, that's on you tell. I uh, didn't even know that something like that happened, but I was even educated today about some police officers, police having children in Riverton. When I was there, that was unheard of. But hey, you know, Unspear is one of the best police here I've ever worked in my entire career. Um, because I have helped and changed a lot of people's life. People from crime and help them, you know, to made themselves better. You understand? There was even a guy one time um, I held in Waterhouse community. And at the time, he was a young, young, young man. He was like, he was 18 and some months. And I caught him with five pound of um, ganja. And um, he told me that, you know, if I had arrested him, um, his family would have to pay for it. And they didn't have the money to. He knew me. And um, he knew my father and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I spoke to him and, and, you know, I let him go along with me. Not that, 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 that I'm condoning crime, but you have to understand, you know, when you're from the ghetto, you have to understand how the ghetto operates. And, you know, he wasn't doing it for himself. And the same young man, um, years ago, like, said, um, I would say, the 19, 18 years ago, um, you know, this man was, he was the assistant manager at a bank of America bank. And he reminded me, I didn't even remember him. But that's how life is. So you have to, sometimes, you know, you have to use your discretion as police officers. So I wanted to listen. Um, as you have listened to what he had said, I wanted to, I'm going to continue with my delivery in regards to this river time thing and what has been happening there. Uh, yes, Brother Mark, and as you're talking about, um, you know, the things in South. And I'm going to tell you something about. I can hear my old people, seeing a police officer, you know, but I am going to tell you. Because, you know, you have been. Um, I know that you work with OCEO, but I'm going to just, just give you a little tip of the iceberg about OCEO. OCEO, Power Campbell, Power Campbell, and the late Bud Spencer. And another senior officer, the one who told. Two other senior officers, Asmouth is one of them, and the other one is a prominent politician. He's the one um, who was responsible for Mackay getting transferred. Um, you know, when, when um, Samuel Samuel's, um, told Mackay not to go back down to see if you got because of Courtney Bowers, it was done by Asmouth and another officer who went on to become a prominent senior officer and a politician. Anyway, let me tell you this, in case you didn't know. Um, in the 2000s, one time there were a lot of hijacking of truck and robbing of um, robbing of good trucks and tying up people and take them to Riverton City and all of that. Police, senior police officers were involved in it. Senior police officers from Unspear was involved, and 
I was the one who was able to break everything wide open, and I was marked for death. Your friend, as well, here, Sparrow Campbell and Bud Spencer. Although, although the, the man that they eventually kill him after, you know, his name is Clive Williams, Big Lead. And um, when he was held in, held, I know he wasn't held. I went and looked for him the first day I went back to work. Because I was on leave right, for years, you know, because um, they had, you know, they wanted me dead. Or dead, not alive. And when I went down to the man's house, his mother, um, Detective Carpal McFarlane, and, you know, drove the vehicle and I went to the man's house because I knew him very well in a big lead, Clive Williams. And she said that uh, we come to kill our son and she start bars of murder. Before I reached back, before I reached back in the car, I got a radio message shortly after that, that that the man was there to see me at Honestly. When I went there, when I went to the office at Honestly and talked to this man, his name is Clive Williams. They call him Big Lady. One of um he was a done for um for Majestic Gear and Boxer. And I'm telling you, that was 2005 when the man had offered me. At first, he said that he thought that, that I had resigned because he heard that I was living in America. And that's the reason why he came back to Jamaica. The reason why he said that is that in 1994, the same man, and myself and Bobby were involved in a shooting with him, and he was shot. He took his shot and ran away to America. You understand? Down in Baxter, Bobby Reds. So he came back to Jamaica, he said, because he heard that I had migrated. Police had told him, and he told me some police that he was friends with. And I said, oh, you're oh, friends with those police are not friends. And he just leaned back and says, a different time. Man. The man, Clive Williams, said, big lady, you know, said in the CID office to me, he wanted to talk to me privately. And he said that um, it's a different thing going on at once, you know, as every police are eat food. And I am telling you, the man had promised to give me eight hundred thousand dollar to release him because I didn't tell him why I came and looked for him, but he know my person as a street detective, and he said that he have eight hundred thousand to give him because he says everything is different now. It's not like when I was there. You understand? Because every police are eat food now. From Mr. Ian must go all the way down. You understand? So you know, you know how, how me, you know what kind of style me yeah? I come back with and things. So. I told him, said, big lady can give the $800,000 to a lawyer. I don't want your money. And he just leaned back, leaned back in the chair and said to me, Mr. Porter, if you don't take it from another big man will take it from you. Anyway, so he was detained and supposed to um, place an identification for him. I wasn't the investigator. I was a part of, I was privy to the information of, of, of the crimes that this man was uh, was behind. He did not shy away from the crimes that he had committed and who were facilitate, facilitate, facilitating his crimes and when and how they could hijack the trucks. When the police patrols were changing, when they were changing, change over, so they know they have a certain amount of time when they could hijack the truck at and he, have, he, he was just talking to me freely, telling me stuff. You understand? Until when I told him that I don't want his money. And he was like, pretty much, well, you're the only detective who's going to be in this division like this because it's, it's a different era. Every man all about to eat a food. So you yeah, come on and go on, like, say, you know, with the squeaky squeak thing, and you feel like, say, you okay, can't done crime. You can't stop fight crime because. It had day everybody I make money. You understand? So anyway, you know, it, it, it's it is it is just like this now. So after everything um has been determined that you know this man was involved in criminal activities, rum, all kind of goods, and he was telling me how it works and all of that thing. And all these police officers, how they get their cups and all kind of thing. And it was between him and a guy named Pulpe from White Wing. And Pulpe have access to the 
it's all under the, and the hierarchy and the police force at Huntsby and, and, um, and it's a different era. Anyway, um, his prisoner card was written up and he was to place an identification parade. The police officer, one of the, so when McFarlane, the detective corporal McFarlane, when he read one of his statements, he was like, man, you weren't here, so how oh, did you know that it was this man? So I said that everything, the, one of the first, one of the first initial robbery, you know, every, the description and everything fitted it. And he was like, man, you're a genius, man, oh, you know this. So he placed big letters to go on identification for you. Would you know that your friend, as well here, wrote on big lead, on big leads card that he is that he released Big Lead and his instruction. He's not the investigator officer, but he released him. And that's one of the reasons why um, as well he was no longer an police officer. And that's even both of the things that they wanted to kill me. Eventually, Detective Carpal McFarlane, because of his sloppiness, they were able to um, kick him out of the police force because they say of some corruption. That's what they said. I don't know. Um, if I'm not lying, I think he's in the group. Too. You understand? So this corruption that has been going on at South has been going on for a long. It has been going on. You see, the, from the exit of um, John God and Dudley Bryant, from then the corruption that starts it just start to grow a little until it has exposed. It has reached this crescendo now. You understand? Exploding police officers having children in River Time City and all that, man. So, for your friend as well here that you have been speaking highly of, that was as well right then, as well here, contributed to the crimes. He and Paro Campbell to what's going on in South now. As well, um, it starts with Donovan O'Connor, Ox, Derek Osmouth, Clapping Knight, and we call Cowboy. Then Paro Campbell and um, Bud Spencer were dead. Even Bud Spencer, Bud Spencer, a gun enough that was recovered enough. And the man was arrested and the man went to prison enough. Bud Spencer sell the same gun enough. You know that you have heard from the man in an experienced and certified detective of the Jamaica Constant. Bud Spencer, or if you get to, you know, a, um, a better picture of what is happening there in Riverton City and the police officers who have contributed to. Um, just to this corruption that is going on in the police force because you know the standard that was left there by one of um, the great um, in, um, great commanding officer and crime chief all of that um, of the boatmen left you know Dudley Bryan and um, John Gars everything that start goes you know down in and everyone that you know that um, the only superintendent of police that came there that wasn't corrupt when I said co-op, um, you know, wasn't involved in any shenanigans. You know, it was Fred Williams, and he wasn't protecting any corrupt police officers. You understand? Um, when I was there, a police officer, um, he's dead. They killed him over two years ago, Ricky Bailey. Um, Ricky Bailey um, robbed people cocaine and their money, and he had to return it, um, return the cocaine and the money. And shortly after that, Ricky Bailey was promoted. I have never involved in any thiefing or anything like that. You understand what I'm saying? And I was never promoted. And I was a harder, harder worker than most of the people that were promoted. But because I was not a thief and stuff like that, you understand? And um, nobody had any secret for me. And I wasn't anybody's boy. So I wasn't going out there and shaking out anybody for, for none of them. You understand? So thanks for watching the Jamaica Young Police channel. Remember to like, share, comment, and most of all click on the bell. And the bell will serve us for the VIP people, you know. Once you click on it, once a video is released, you'll be the first one to get it. But as you can see, um, the corruption of the Unspear police start you know, um, those are the people who are responsible for setting the standard. That's why uh, this boy, um, Siren Clark, who have killed over 34 Jamaican and counting, 34, 
and his sire on his 20th, and he has killed 34 people. Wow. Well, I'm so watching the Jamaica, you know, 27. I'll be safe for next year. Peace.